Good morning guys. I'm on the rooftop. You can see kind of see the view there. Having my uh, morning coffee. It's about 9 a.m. So um, as I was talking about in the other video, um, the hospital trips. So let me tell you about our, my hospital experience and what uh, what maybe can help you in the future. So I had no idea. If you're in a province, I mean, th this doesn't apply if you're in a big city or, you know, like Cebu or Dumaguete or Manila or, or any of one of the major cities here. But if you live outside of, you know, a, a big city and access to, to big private hospitals, uh, this maybe applies for you and be prepared for it. <coughs> so, I was out having a good time, having some drinks, was at a club or, you know, one of the bars and uh, started feeling real strange, pressure in my head, heart beating real fast. Um, just, just got dizzy, got, just felt really strange. And, uh, Went and checked my blood pressure. Luckily, there was someone, uh, someone at the place that had the the blood pressure cuff and could check my blood pressure. And it was, it started at it, it was, uh, I believe it was like one one sixty, maybe one sixty over ninety. And they said, "I oh, you you should you should go. You should go to the hospital." And we're talking about a local province hospital, like a public public province hospital. They don't have a lot at a public province hospital. So by the time I got to the hospital, my blood pressure had reached uh, 190 over 100, or maybe 110. <coughs> I go in the hospital, they uh, took tricycle, which took forever from where I was at. It was more than uh, 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes on the tricycle. So quite a long time to get to the hospital. They said an ambulance would have been longer. They said if I would have called an ambulance, it would have took more than an hour. That's why I took the tricycle. So I go in the hospital. They check my blood pressure in the hospital. Um, they give me this the, the medicine put under your tongue to let it to bring your blood pressure down and then here's where all the <laughs> the shock happened after that so I'm in the I'm in the emergency room you know some of the English is good some of it's not so I you know the first doctor I really didn't understand everything she was saying I was freaked out. I was worried. I'd never had blood, pre blood pressure that high. I'm over there scared and worried. I'm about, to, about about to have a heart attack. You know, freaking out. And doctor sees me. They uh, they, they give me the medicine. The put under your tongue to immediately try to lower your blood pressure. And then um, comes checks on me. My you know checks my blood. My blood pressure again. It, it's slowly going down uh, after it went back into a safe level they did an EKG and the EKG machine this is some ancient like old school wires and like clamps it was like I was like I was I'd never seen an EKG machine it wasn't electronic wasn't you know wasn't the pads they stick on you and, and uh, you know, read the digital EKG like we have in America. It was some ancient, like, 
I don't know. That, that, that machine was probably from like 1950s, 60s, I don't know. But that clamps, it was like checking the engine, it was like the what you use to adjust the engine timing on a car or it clamps around the, the wire. So they clamped this, these clamps around my arms and legs. They put these suction cups. You know, suction cups all over there. And then the EKG prints out on a, a this, this little mobile old school printer, like a dot matrix, not like dot, like a thermal printer or something. The little, little bitty two inch paper prints out of it. Took them like 15 minutes just to get the EKG thing working or correctly. And after that, the, the doctor checks my, after my blood pressure is coming down, she says we need to, she checks me out. You know, I'm in the emergency, I'm waiting almost an hour for a doctor to finally visit me, you know, to come check me out. She says, you need to stay in the hospital. Uh, we need to admit you, uh, you, admit you, you need to stay overnight at least one day, maybe more, see how, see how it goes. And then she writes me a prescription for, uh, writes me a prescription. And I didn't understand why she's writing a prescription. I'm in the hospital, you're talking about keeping me there overnight. What are you writing me a prescription for? She said, no, you have to, do you have somebody with you? I said, no, I don't have anybody with me. I'm, well, this is what happened, I came to the hospital. So, here in the Philippines, they don't have even the basics uh, on hand. Like, uh, they put me on IVs, and they don't have IV medicine. The, the IV bag that they, the med whatever medicines they're giving you, and the, the, the solutions in the hanging bag for your IV drip, they don't have them. The prescription was for, basically that writes you a prescription for everything. So if you don't have someone to go to the hospital with you, what, what you have to do, you have to send someone uh, to, to the ph pharmacy. So you're sitting waiting in the, in the emergency room. I told them I didn't have anybody with me. There's uh, tricycle drivers outside the, the hotel. So you have to pay the tricycle driver, go get the prescription, come back, bring the medicine back before I can even get an IV. Just like the basics, I was, I was like shocked, and then at that point I was like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna die in this third world country hospital." That can you even call it a hospital? You know, and I'm sure that's the levels of province public hospitals are probably different. It's probably related to the local economics of of, of that area, poor country, you know, but. You know, thoughts going, the thought at the time was going through my mind, you know, or, or after, after I get out of the hospital, I'm thinking, well, what would have happened if I had no cash on me at the time, or there was no driver available to go to the, to the pharmacy? What would have happened? What, would they have let me just have a heart attack right there on the table and in the emergency room and let me die? I don't really know. Thank God that didn't happen, but... It was crazy. So the craziest thing about it, they wrote me the first prescription for the IVs. I sent somebody to go get it. it was costly and takes time because if they go to one pharmacy, there's three pharmacies in town here. If one pharmacy's out of stock, they have to go to each one, each you know, next one, next one, next one. And if they're out of stock, you don't get the medicine because it's not available here. I mean, the, the closest major city is two hour drive away. The fastest route is maybe an hour and a half by car. So they go to, uh, they bring the IV drip back, put me on the IV. Um, then later, after I spend the money, tricycle driver, go, they get the medicine, they find the medicine, they come back, they get me in the room. Uh, they put me on the IV drip. I put the IV in and I've, I've got, I don't know how many medicines. There's like three different bags hanging there. Uh, doctor comes in later, about 30 minutes later. Oh, 
write some more prescriptions. Here's the other medicine. And I'm thinking, if you knew I was going to need all this different medication, why didn't you do it? Why, why don't you write one prescription so they can get all the medicine all at once? That happened three times. Three times I had to send back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's, you gotta, you gotta pay for the person to go if you don't have anybody. You gotta pay for the tricycle, the cost of the transportation, the cost of the medicine. And you gotta trust a stranger and give him money because if you don't give him enough money and he doesn't have enough to buy, he'll just come, he'll go all the way there, find out the price and then come back to you and ask you, oh, it's this cost, I need more money to pay for it which is more delay and more time. It is the craziest thing. So, my take and my learning experience from this was, number one, if you're in Providence, you need to go to a public hospital. Make sure you have a network of local friends or other foreigners or something. People that you know that you can call immediately that live nearby you uh, you know, build that network because you need someone to go to the hospital with you. Um, also, you know, after after this experience, you know, been looking into uh, medical insurance, but more so is keep a, a, an emergency medical fund for situations like this. Not only do you need somebody to go with you and transportation that you can just call and drop, you know, that you can go on a, on a moment's notice and, and someone that you can trust to go with you on a moment's notice that'll drop whatever they're doing to go with you, but an, an emergency medical fund, you know, Gcash is very, very handy for this situation. So I would always keep some kind of Gcash balance because um, Gcash is accepted everywhere. It's not cash on your person and nobody can access it without your code it's on you know it's on your phone so or or keep an emergency fund available possibly if you know of, of, of if you have a friend or, or another foreigner or someone you know that you can trust it's close by they can you know get a phone call and drop what they're don't drop what they're doing on a at a moment's notice but yeah so Crazy. Hospitals are crazy here. So like I was talking about the other video, I'm on the rooftop. Check out the view. Morning coffee. It gets hot here pretty fast in the morning though. Right as the sun comes up between six and seven, it's really nice up here, really cool. We're going into summertime here in the Philippines, so the hot season's already started. But yeah, hospitals, man, plan for it. Uh, hopefully this helps people in the future. Definitely have a have a emergency plan for sure. And, and be prepared for anything, you know. The one that worries me in the province is, oh, you know, we come here, we, in Texas, we don't, we don't have cobras and vipers and all these deadly snakes and I found out recently, actually, if you were to get bit by a cobra here in my province, um, even that they said that they're not even sure they have the anti-venom in Calipan, which is an hour and a half, the, the major city, which is an hour and a half drive there. And if you get by, you get bit by a cobra and you don't have, you're not to a hospital and get anti-venom within, I don't know, what is it, 10 minutes maybe? Your chances of of surviving is basically you're dead. You get you know if you don't get anti venom from a cobra bite in an hour and a half. I don't think you can survive from that. You're pretty much a goner. So yeah, I won't be venturing off into the jungle anytime soon. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but yeah, just uh. Enjoying the view this morning. The quietness on the rooftop here. It's pretty cool. 
the, the place over there. Um, it's a really cool place. Uh, you can't see it all, but it's kind of covered, but it looks like kind of like an, a medieval castle. It's a, it's a resort hotel. There's a, I did another video when I first, last year, about that place and did a big walkthrough. It's really nice, really cool place. So, hospitals have a plan, be prepared, for sure. Emergency medical fund, I can't stress it enough.